This video shows experimental results for eight scenes. In these experiments, we used an AR marker attached to a 7mm thick base. The top row shows input frames and AR marker hiding results achieved using the baseline approach, which just uses homography, as well as our method without intensity adjustment. The bottom row shows results achieved using our full method, the rectified frames with tracked feature points, and the rectified background image deformed according to the tracked feature points. In scene A, the marker is placed on the curved geometry with a grid pattern. In the rectified frames, we can see that the texture's appearance changes around the marker due to camera motion and the curved geometry, and using tracked feature points, our method deforms the background image. As a result, our method avoids geometric and photometric discontinuities. On the other hand, with a baseline approach, which only uses homography, significant discontinuities in texture appear around the marker boundary. Without intensity adjustment, the texture is seamlessly connected on the boundary, but the difference in brightness is noticeable. In scene B, the marker is placed in a planar geometry with a stripe pattern. Displacement of the texture occurs with a baseline approach because the marker base is thick. For such a stripe pattern, our method does not always track feature points accurately in the rectified background image because of the aperture problem. Therefore, inaccurate tracking may excessively deform the background image. However, our method can at least compensate for the displacement in the direction orthogonal to the stripe pattern. In scene C, the marker is placed in a curved geometry with a stripe pattern. Similarly to scene B, our method produces a more plausible texture than those without deformation and intensity adjustment. However, we can also see small distortions in the stripe pattern. In scene D, the marker is placed on a messy desk with a book, some sheets of paper with figures and text, and a blank notebook. Because these items are partially overlapping, the background geometry is slightly uneven. In the rectified frame, feature points are distributed almost uniformly on textured regions, edges, and even textureless regions. Although feature point tracking in textureless regions is extremely difficult, our proposed method still gives plausible results because it uses the confidence of each feature point to deform the background image. In scene E, the marker is placed on an uneven surface on aligned books. In addition, we changed illumination color continuously and moved the camera around. Our method successfully handles the geometric and photometric discontinuities. However, our method cannot reproduce the motion blur that occurs when the camera moves quickly. In scene F, the marker is placed on an uneven surface of stones. The result of the baseline approach looks like a floating, stone-textured plane. In contrast, our method's results are better fit to the surroundings. We show the limitations of the proposed method using two scenes. In the scene with occlusion, the vertical plane is occluded in the input frame depending on the camera pose. In this case, the result of our proposed method still shows the vertical plane in the marker regions while other regions are handled correctly. In the scene with non-smooth, steep angle geometry, our proposed method cannot interpolate motion well around the edge between the two planes. In the future, we need to develop a texture deformation method that can handle such non-smooth geometry.